started then. Without further ado, for so recording. Yes. All right, thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TSC call. Um, I hope you've all taken note of the antitrust policy notice that is in front of you. If not, please have a look again. Uh, you should also be aware of the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. Everybody is welcome to join this call and participate, but uh, please behave. So with that being done, let's move on with the actual agenda. Um, to start with, we have a couple of announcements. So Dave. <laughs> I wrote a bunch there so that I could speak fewer words and keep this short. So the high level story is we are reorganizing the community calendar so that it can be managed through the list.hyperledger.org interface, which means that all of you out there that are maintainers or chairpersons of a SIG or working group will now have direct control over what meetings are scheduled and when they're scheduled and things like that. We finally worked out how to aggregate them all into a single community calendar, which we'll be embedding on the wiki and making available to anybody to subscribe to. But I've been run, running into problems with the fact that people who subscribe to mailing lists don't use their normal email addresses. And uh, so tracking down all the people that I need to work with has been difficult. So I thought I would come to the TSC meeting and I will be blasting this out on the TSC mailing list in a little bit um, to get this going. So it, it really breaks down into four steps. The first one is if you are a maintainer of a project or you are a chairperson of a working group or a SIG, I need you to email me as soon as possible. My email address is right there. Um, if you make the subject line, you know, the name of your project, working group, or SIG, and mod me, then I can filter them all out and deal with you as quickly as possible. Ideally, you would email me from the account you use for your mailing list address, but if you don't email me with that address, please put your mailing list address in the email because I need to map you to what, what you're known on lists.hyperledger or so. Once you've emailed me, I will give you moderator status. And then the next step is to go into the Hyperledger community calendar and look at what is scheduled for your, your group and make new uh, meetings over on list.hyperledger.org. And I have a couple of instructional videos there on how to schedule a meeting and how to delete a meeting. That's step one. And then down below on step two, uh, subscribe or check out the feed from list.hyperledger.org. That's the, that's the aggregate feed right there. And verify, if you can scroll down a little bit, Arno, or Rai, scroll down Rye. a little bit. Yeah. Um, and once you've moved your calendar events over, go ahead and subscribe to the aggregate feed, verify that they're there. And once they're there, then go ahead and email me once again and say that your migration is complete so I can tick you off the list. And um, hopefully we can make this migration as smooth and quick as possible. And then we can hand over the control to all of you in each of your groups. This, the reason we're doing this primarily is it removes me and Rai and Salona from being critical path for handling the scheduling of things. That's really what it is. And it's a nicer interface for doing an aggregate um, calendar for the community. So that's all I've got to say. So I have one question. I mean, there are plenty of entries today in the calendar. What happens to those? Are we supposed to delete those or what? In the community calendar, the existing one? Yeah. Um, well, the idea is that you would duplicate them over and into list.hyperledger.org. Once I've ticked you off the list and confirmed everything, then we're going to clear the old community calendar. Oh, okay. and delete it and everybody will move to the new um, community calendar which is what I put there that ICS link okay all right Does that make sense yeah we, so, we just don't want to get caught with nothing on the calendar at the moment right so we're gonna have both for 
a day or two, hopefully. So, so question, yeah, uh, are we, oh, uh, so I just tried to open that and it downloaded something and not opened it. Um, well, it's an ICS file. Yeah, so how do you actually view it? Well, you can go to um, calendar.google.com and underneath, um, other calendars, you click the plus button and then you select from the list from URL and you paste that URL in there. Now, I don't recommend doing that because Google Calendar only refreshes external calendars once every 24 hours. So you're not going to be able to see your changes immediately if you're trying to verify you did the right thing. I recommend using, I don't know, Apple Calendar or any other calendar viewer. Um, I mean, Google Calendar's fine. Just know that there's a 24-hour delay. It'll only refresh uh, once every 24 hours. That's, that, this is why it's important for you to use to make sure that you've registered your other one, the correct one with Groups.io, because you shouldn't be dependent on the Google Calendar. You should be depending on your own personal account under Groups.io. That's correct. The, the, yeah. the Google Calendar is for that aggregate view. It, and so that people can do the subscriptions that they need. It's not for an individual to be using. Correct. So is there a way from groups.io that I can get to the calendar view? Yeah. If you log in to groups.io and then go and then click or go to your account and click calendar, that will be um, the, the aggregate calendar for your account and your account, it will show all events for all groups that you are currently subscribed to. Right. So how do I see them for the groups that I'm not subscribed to? Well, that, then you would need a calendar viewer and you would need to subscribe to the aggregate calendar, which is linked to in the TSC um, agenda for today. Okay. So my original question before I clicked on the link was, um, you want the uh folks to move these over instead of you guys moving them over yes is and the, the reason request? is is because yeah that's the request and the reason is is that when you subscribe or when you've signed up with groups.io a great many of you you use different email addresses than what i know you as and so i have a list of all of our maintainers but that is isn't map to the email addresses in groups.io and i need to go into groups.io and grant you moderator status so that you can manage the calendar for your group. And so I have to do the mapping between the list of emails I have and the list of emails that groups.io has. And so I'm asking that you all email me and say, this is what I signed up for or signed up with so that I can track you all down and, and moderate you. So just because I know this is true, there are people who don't attend the TSC calls. There are people who are not on the TSC list. Um, there are people who don't even subscribe to their own project mailing list or their own group mailing list. How are we going to make sure that everybody gets this? Um, I am going to email them. Oh, yeah. To answer your question, Tracy, it's a good question, right? So I'm doing this to get the low hanging fruit. This will get probably the bulk of you. Um, and then the remaining ones, I'm going to email them directly using the maintainers list I have. And hopefully that will work. And if there are any remaining ones, I will email their mailing list and say, hey, does anybody know who's running this? Can you email them? And we'll track them down. There'll be a long tail. It'll probably be a couple of days, if not a week, to track everybody down. But, yeah, a couple of days, I think you're optimistic. But, uh, you know. I'm going to do yes. my best. Well, another another issue that we're trying to resolve here is we have a lot of meetings that um, don't exist, right? That yeah. um, are just duplicate entries, and we don't know who has them. So there's a lot of cleanup that we just can't do through Google Calendar easily without deleting everything and starting over. So, yeah. And leading up so to this point, that's essentially what we're doing here, right? Sorry. That's essentially yeah, gonna, what you want us to do. You create a new calendar, eventually we're going to get rid of the old one. That's correct, yeah. And, and as uh, you create the new one, you want to make sure you know who owns what. Correct. And I want to make sure that we are, are the ones that are accurate in the community calendar get properly moved over to the new system. Yeah. And they have okay. control. 
So from yes. here on out, that you don't have to come to us anymore. Everybody yep. has control right. of their own stuff. And we've also been noticing that some of the other groups have been doing other small things that haven't even been registered with us. And this becomes a way for them to all be registered now. Yeah, so, I mean, it's kind of novel that the open source group dedicated to distributed systems is now going to distribute control. <laughs> okay. I've given you enough of the time of this call. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if anybody else has more questions, please reach out to Dave. And if there is things that are valuable, uh, valuable to everybody, uh, at least mail it to the TSC list or put it in the TSC chat room. Okay. Yeah, chatting me if you need me right away is probably the most efficient way. All right, let's move on. Just quickly, I wanted to echo an email that uh, Jessica sent uh, a few days ago. There is a contributor marketing committee meeting and uh, every maintainer and you know a contributor to one of the Hyperledger project is invited to attend this meeting is to try to get a better connection between the marketing folks within Hyperledger and the technical folks. I actually attended that call last year, last month and I thought it was quite interesting. So I encourage you to do the same. There's a link there to the email to from Jessica. If you missed it, it does all the details on how to join. But it's next week. Um, in terms of quarterly reports, there were two of them that were due. We received one from Hyperledger Borough. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions. There was a comment or kind of a call out from the Borough project to the TSC regarding drawing more attention. They are, you know, I think it's fair to say Silas for one has been uh, banging on our door for a long time now trying to get more attention and you know getting people to help out with borough and so i noticed there is another call of the such call in the report i don't know that there's anything specific we can do right now but i just wanted to highlight that and i wanted to ask if anybody else has any other questions otherwise most people have reviewed it. I didn't see any comments, so I assume we're okay with this. Yeah, I think that marketing committee meeting that you just mentioned is probably something, I see Sean is on the call. Um, so that's probably something to attend and maybe you can get some ideas there for promotion too. Okay, that's a good point then. Okay, so otherwise the, uh, Performance and schedule working group report is due. So please try to get to it when you have a chance, Mark. So let's move on to the crux of this meeting. I am a bit ambitious, but I, you know, we'll see how it flies. But uh, I, um, so Mick is on the call. I delayed this discussion last week because Mick had informed me he would not be able to join the call. But the working group task force has been busy and came up with a whole series of uh, propositions, proposals to the, to the TSC. And I kind of put them into formal proposals to the TSC under the new decision lock system we have. And um, I think I can kind of summarize it, although maybe Nick wants to do that. Um, or maybe I give it a shot to try to expedite this and then Mick you can tell me if I'm missing anything. As I say, but now we can figure out if you understand. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, you know, essentially it comes in, in, in two, two pieces, right? The first, and I, I kind of reverse this from what the task force put together, but, uh, and you'll, I'll, I'll explain. So the general idea is we create a new type of group called a task force which is limited in time and has a clear specific delivery, their deliverable, okay? Um, the launch is that, you know, somebody has to put a proposal before the TSC and the TSC has to approve it for the task force to get started. At the end or by the end of their, their time frame, 
the allotted time, the task force must report on what they have completed. If they, if they need to, they can apply for an extension, but it's not automatic. It's up to the TSC to look at this. So if we agree to that, and you know, I'd be inclined to you know, have one vote that encompasses those four, then we can say, well, if we have task force, we don't really want to keep going with the working groups as they exist. So we can transition the existing working group to a new type of group that is, doesn't have this you know, characteristic of having a clear deliverable or a set time frame. We, we can call technical uh, spatial interest group or technical interest group for shorter. I saw uh, Vipin mentioned we could make it shorter, which is fine with me. Let's not fight over the word now, the name. And then we just stop creating new working groups, which is the last piece. Working groups shall be dropped. It's essentially, it doesn't mean we're killing the existing working groups. The existing working groups get transitioned to this new TSIG or TIG but we no longer create working groups. That's what the last piece is about. Mick, how am I doing? That's right on the ball. You got it. So, it, right. and again, this is just, this is really a reflection of a couple of things. One is that um, the working groups are having a hard time describing any form in which they can have impact on the projects in, the cur in their current structure. Two is that because of the frustration with trying to do both sort of work items, um, uh, membership in the working groups uh, for everyone that I've talked to has been going down. Um, they're challenged with the current structure to, to get people interested and excited in it. And the task force model seems to be working really well. So let's just formalize that. That was the gist of it. I have a quick question, Mick. Um, do you see the T-SIGs as being sort of the long-running meeting place and then seeing task, force, task forces spinning out of T-SIGs to get work done, like serial task forcing out of a T-SIG? That was, that was kind of exactly what we had in mind. The, in our experience over the last probably 12 months, specifically with the architecture working group, the meetings that are most well attended are the ones that are informational. So we bring the Avalon team in and we say, talk to us about privacy and how the privacy works. Um, what are the expectations for it? And it gives us a way of doing kind of some deep dive informational exchanges on it. And then that comes out with information that a variety of projects can start taking advantage of in their own project spaces. So it becomes a way of just sort of educating. And then it, my expectation would be that things can come out of that, which would be a task force like, oh, we need to have somebody that can sit down and actually give a definition for, um, for privacy that, uh, and confidentiality that Hyperledger will um, use consistently. Right. I mean, and, and that becomes a task force. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions regarding any of this? Yeah, I wonder if we could reach similar ends by just setting timelines in the existing working groups. Because one of my observations with the working group health was that it seemed to be related to its duration. So like the, uh, the DCI working group is young, and so the deliverables for that group are still relevant and the activity around it is still strong. But a working group that had been created maybe near the inception of Hyperledger has kind of grown distant from its original goals. And I think that's a factor in decreased participation and uh, decreased focus. So if we just took the existing working groups and had them recharter with a specific deliverable and a specific end date, then we wouldn't necessarily have to create a whole other set of, um, I don't know, group structures here. So how would you make, for example, something like performance work, performance or architecture, or even uh, some of the educational focus ones fit into that model? They, they are, and, and the reason I ask that is because they are, in fact, long-running 
communities of individuals who are trying to interact with one another, um, the specific struggle that they have has nothing to do with their shared interest. It has everything to do with the fact that work products that are created there in that charter have no, uh, have historically not had any impact on, on projects. Yeah, so I think that's the thing is finding the work product that that rallies support and engagement. And do you, so I think could you give me an example? Right. Um, and well, I, I I hear what you're saying, Dan. Um, I'm struggling because I have a hard time coming up with examples of the kind of work items that could come out of there, which are not things that fit very naturally into what we've been describing as a task force. Yeah, so I've got an example and a counterexample. So the counterexample would be, um, actually, I just lost my counterexample. Um, so the, the example would be maybe for something from the architecture working group is doing an assessment on um, consensus and designing an idealized consensus API and then issuing that out. And that's not a requirement for the projects to adopt, but if it has intrinsic value, then the projects are directly motivated to want to adopt it. Right, but and that's so exactly, that, that, that kind of work item is exactly the one that has failed in the past. Um, because those of us who end up participating in it spend a hell of a lot of time putting it together with the knowledge that there's no way for us as an external group to be able to get adoption of that so it's really wasted work I mean, and and that's the perception of that kind of deliverable right now which is what we're trying to get away from that um I, let me let me turn around to the example that i think is a better example is the the paper that the performance working group came out with which had influence on caliper right which is you know defining the set of metrics the language of of performance and then aligning calipers work with that. I think that's the best success story that we have right now for high level, um, top down driven um, work coming out of a working group. But that's the exception, not the rule. But that so, one, yeah, but, so the real thing, Vic, on that is why did that one, I think is, is you know, why, why, one, why that one works versus one like architecture doesn't work, right? And I think the performance one works, right? Because there's a shared concern there, right? And people were looking at performance and people were starting out on the tools. I'll be blunt. Why do I actually care about the architecture working group? Nobody in the architecture working group contributes to products. Um, so you shouldn't. Our That's projects, the point. Sorry. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, well, I mean, so we the all, point is, we right? all do, but we all do, but it's uh, a, but in a different way. You know, but, the, old, the old head didn't contribute one line of code to any project, right? So, so well, I, I Gary, think maybe Gary, I, that's an overstatement, yeah. but the uh, no, it's not. Well, he didn't. He never contributed. A, he never contributed a lot of code, and that's fine. But then, what the expectation of the group is, right? So that's if that's really your thing, right? Is I, I don't have a problem with people having groups, right? It's just like like you said, it, what you know, was there some expectation set that the group was actually going to do something that was going to result in something, and then maybe people like Nick and others will get frustrated because it doesn't. That that I guess, what do you do with those, right? So, so I think what we're saying, Gary, I think what we're saying on this is um, if there, when we formed the, when we formed the working groups four years ago, that the idea in mind, at least from the architecture was that we would come up with the idealized architecture and that there would be some teeth associated with that. And we would drive some um, convergence around that architecture. Right? that the convergence, that the sort of target goal for convergence would come out of that. That's, that's a completely right. unrealistic. I mean, it's a completely unrealistic goal, right? We, we know that, okay? What has been successful over the last year in the architecture working group is really much more focused on informational and educational, right? It's bringing people into the projects and trying to get cross-project communication happening and education happening rather than driving a model of consensus around it. So that, that it's that model for, I mean, that, that's what we were trying to call the T-stick, right? So that the focus is not on work products, but the focus is on dissemination of information, which can seed other things which might lead to work products specifically in the task force. 
So, so it's, it's kind of an acknowledgement of what you were saying, which is, you know, it, it can be a useful environment, even if we're not contributing. Yeah. No, no, exactly. I wasn't saying that it's not useful, right? I, I was just saying that it was, like you said, it's just hard to measure things that's deliverable. So yeah, that makes sense. So, that's so, so TCs, we call them tech interest groups, I guess, right? Versus yeah, whatever. we don't want to have another term of community or whatever, right? But yeah, they're basically like community of like-minded people that want to get together and share information. Yeah. So, so I mean, back to uh, Dan's point about the naming and stuff, I think, you know, there is a little bit of overhead creating a new kind of group at the same time where, uh, and, and, you know, we're going to eliminate working groups. So it kind of begs the question, can you just create the new kind of group and do the same old name of working group that I can appreciate the task force as some, you know, uh, there's some semantic associated task force, which is much more like task driven, short lived that you probably want to carry through within the name. So I, I think in overall, it's a reasonable approach. So in the model where we've got SIGs, it seems one of the risks would be that like the working groups, when there's not a deliverable to drive to, it's harder to maintain active participation. How would we address that? So in the Dan, working group or the new groups, you mean the T or TC, whatever we call them? Yeah. So Dan, we've actually found the opposite to be true, that the more somebody is focused, the more a group is focused on deliverables, the less participation becomes. Um, <laughs> so uh, scared. Yeah. So people just, it's hard to get people to do work. And if you focus on work, you'll have less people show up. That's at least that's been my experience. Yeah, I've, I've had right. slightly different experiences. I guess we don't need to get into the ins and outs of those, but I, I guess the relevant one from the performance working group would be that when we were getting towards producing an artifact, we had a lot of discussion and engagement. And after that work product was complete, even though we occasionally had presentations uh, from performance related speakers, there was never quite the same momentum and mark you can uh so then i appreciate the concept i think it's not a, a big danger though i mean we'll have to keep an eye on those new tigs or whatever we call them and you know eventually if something is really dormant we can always pull the plug yeah they are I want fairly low cost I want to also point out that that is one of the few documents that the tsc gave teeth if I recall, there was a lot of talk that, you know, Caliper needed to follow the recommendation of the performance and scale working group. And that was something that the TSC indicated had to be done. So that was one of like the few working group deliverables that actually had some kind of teeth. That's a good point. All right, so any other concerns? I would like to get to a vote if there isn't. Uh... Any major yeah. obstacle? Oh no, I just I want to echo your um, comment about the the names, right? Um, just in thinking about all of the changes that have to happen to our existing, um, you know, the wiki, the mailing list, the chat channels, all of the places where we call these things working groups. If we change the name, we have to change all of those places to reflect that change as well. Um, so just echoing kind of your what I think you were attempting to say, right, which is, um, do we want to rename them or do we want to just repurpose what they are into these discussion groups? Uh, I believe the name the same. Yeah, that's kind of what I was hinting on. I mean, so I, I think that comes into the, the name, e, right? We, <laughs> yeah, and Tracy, because I don't. We, we, I, all I, I was going to say is that I don't think we're. Sorry, I don't think we're Go bound ahead. to a particular. Yeah, I don't think we're bound to a particular name. The only reason that I wanted to make sure we called it out here differently was to just make sure we reinforce the point that there is a change in role. Yeah. So it would it was not about the naming and the other things. I mean, make the decision about keep calling them working groups and just drop the requirement for for deliverables. That's perfectly fine. That's uh, the only advantage in the name change is that it does reinforce that there is a change in in role. That's right. it. 
Can a working group still optionally create a work product? Yeah, of course. Okay. I will point out that uh, I did just create uh, a GitHub repo for, I think, the identity working group on Zippin's request. So I think that's, uh, you know, was created with the assumption that the identity working group would be creating work products. So I think the answer is, um, yeah, yeah. All right, so I, I think what the, we're talking about now is not to create the TIGs or TCs, but to keep working groups for that. Is that right? Yeah. So it would affect the last two proposals, but so I would like to move to approve the first four as the first step. So basically approve the whole the task force. Yes. Process. <laughs> yep. Okay. So that's uh, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. One A, B, C, D. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Anybody wants to second this? Second. Second. Can we at least uh, click on the item so we know everybody has the text in front of them for specifically what we're voting on. If by everyone we mean Dan Middleton, sure. I don't remember what we're doing anymore. <laughs> I need constant. That's why I asked you guys to look at those before. Dan, you signed off on every one of them. You've looked at them, haven't you? I have. You looked at them at the and time. On... <laughs> <laughs> what, and on the first one, I did have a question like, what does it imply when we're creating a task force? So this is one of these things where we don't necessarily have action items on there. Um, I guess those action items are pertinent to the, the motion itself. But when we create a task force, what kind of infrastructure are we imagining around that? It's probably a pain if we create a mail list that, that goes away. So I'm thinking probably not mail lists, but maybe you, uh, wiki space is implicit or we just do all those things on demand. Okay, I appreciate the question. And it's a bit like, you know, Tracy commented, what's the action item? And to me, this is an implementation question. I would like us to agree on the principle and then we can sort out how we implement it. And quite frankly, I think we could let the staff, you know, come up with how they think we should implement it, and then we can go from there. So we already had it was uh, proposed, and did we get a second? Is there going to be a vote? Yes. So we, we have to do that. But I didn't want to. I mean, I don't know if if. Dan was kind of objecting to moving forward with this. I wasn't objecting. I just wanted to make sure that we were all clear on what we were doing there. Okay. So there are certain details that are not sorted out yet, is what basically this comes down to. And I, you know, I'm happy to acknowledge that. But I think we would be moving forward if we could agree to those four first proposal. So uh, I'll ask everybody who agrees to say aye. 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 Doesn't have to be, be. sequential, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody who is objecting to this? Anybody wants to abstain? Okay, hearing none, I'm happy to declare it approved. Thank you. I think that's a victory. So, so one question um, on the previous topic. Um, I had the impression, I guess, that task forces were for the uh, work product. And um, I guess we just said working groups would also have work products. So perhaps I'm a little confused on the difference between these two structures now. So I think task forces are aligned around work products working groups are designed for informational exchange but if they do create work products they do create work products does that make sense also the task force has an explicit timeline right so so the working groups are not timeline still and um could produce work That's products right. okay <laughs> 
it'll be interesting on how you differentiate if you should do a task force or a working group, I guess. But yeah, is, is there a recommendation to the working groups to recharter as task forces and TIGs? No, so it sounds like we're not going to rename a working group to a TSIG or whatever. That's right. So, okay. right, I appreciate you're eager to mark all of this result, but I'd rather we move forward with the agenda and get to the other proposals. I do think, as Dan just talked about, I think we are basically, based on what we've said before, we're not really going to do the E and F, which is the working groups transitioning to some other names. And so we're not going to drop the working groups. And, you know, my take on this is, I don't know if we want to come up with a new proposal on the fly, we leave those alone for today. And for next week's agenda, I can put a new proposal that says exactly what we do with the working groups. I, I do think we need to, yes, somebody wants to say? I was gonna say, we can probably do a, a proposal on the fly. Okay. So I think we would not approve any of those two proposals. And instead, what is it? I think Basically it would just be to drop, for drop the work product requirement. Okay. Yeah, we just say that working groups shall be focused on information exchange and not have required work products. I think we should just say working groups. I think we should just say working groups don't require a work product, <laughs> which is ironic because it's a working group. But so, so working groups don't have start or end or anything other than they're there to talk. That's right. Yeah, they're basically communities. And and the work product is if they make one is supposed to be a summary of the talking. No, no, no it could be whatever they want. Is. Do whatever they want. I, I think there's just I no mandate on a working group. There, there's no mandate. So a task force is, you think about it this way, uh, Troy, it's like a task force, someone's gonna come up with a mission, that mission has a timeline, it has an end deliverable. That's a task right. force. I, I get task force, quick stuff, that's all cool. The working group, we're just putting no restriction on what a working group can be. It's basically people can meet together, discuss whatever common topic they wanna do, and then they can have any outcome they want. Could be chat minutes, could be nothing, could be some handshakes, could be some friends, could be a work product with no okay. timeline. So and it's really just a the community. Okay. okay. And, and do the working Lobby. groups launch the task forces or the projects or either? Hi, it's Bobby. Tricky. Can I give you a good example from my working group? Please go ahead, Bobby. Okay, so when we get recruited from the edX people to edit, um, a course that's going live, um, that would be a task force with a timeline. But when we supply templates for the projects to do um, uh, use cases or white papers, that's something we work on all the time. And that's there for everyone to access along with all documentation from the projects. So that's something that's continually there from our working group as opposed to a task force item like the edX updates. Does that work for everybody? I, th I think that um, this makes sense to me, but I, I think there's still the, a question around what do we do with like working group pro uh, working group updates, the quarterly updates? Are they hanging around? Are they going away? Um, you know, is it only the task force that's going to be reporting back? Um, so, I, I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with where we're going. I just think there's more for us to consider as we move forward. All right, so I'm going to move on. I think we, it's not working out very really well to figure this all out now. I don't think that's the best way to use our time. So I, I'm going to stop the discussion on this now and we can all think about this and hopefully have discussions on uh, offline as to you know what we should do and we can put that up next week on the agenda.
And instead, I would like us to try to close the next set of issues, which are related to the Project Lifecycle Task Force. So we had a good run with the Lifecycle uh, Task Force. We closed a lot of issues, but there was one that was actually a big one initially, at least, uh, you know, and kind of motivated the whole thing in the first place was this notion of how we deal with sub projects. And, um, you know, I, it was on my plate to go back to what the discussions had, you know, where the discussion had left us. And uh, I did that yesterday. And I figured that actually we could probably uh, close this because they seem to have convergence about what to do. So there's a set of three proposals. The first one basically says that sub projects are not formally defined, which means they don't come directly under the governance of the TSC. This, and so there's a bunch of things and maybe this is worth clicking on it if you haven't looked at it because there are some, you know, um, additional implications to this, including the fact that it means that the top projects have to, when they do their reports, for instance, to the TSE, they must represent all the different efforts related to that project and not just maybe what might be considered to be the core one. And um, there was the, there, it does imply that there is some kind of governance mechanism within the projects themselves, which can become fairly large, including things like Fabric, where we have quite a few different repos and different sets of maintainers. And all these people need to figure out together how they govern themselves, how, you know, who gets to become maintainer of what. And ideally, all of this really should be documented. And um, I, uh, I'm expecting that the repository structure task force will take that into account and address that by specifying you know what should be there so that we would have some consistency over uh, consistency over all the projects at the end of the day of course the tsc remains the arbitrator the ultimate arbitrator so if if there is a, a conflict within the project they can't figure it out on their own they would escalate to the tsc and the tsc would take care of it but that wouldn't be the first thing that happens. So that's the first part. It's pretty big, so maybe I can stop there and ask if there are questions about that particular aspect. Uh, so I put a question into the highlighted area. Yeah. Uh, that <laughs> project should document, yeah. So this project should document thing, does that become an artifact that's uh, reviewed by the TSC then? At what point? You mean from? Ah, the I, mean, I mean that is a separate question. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I don't know. I, I think, like I said, I would expect this to be addressed as part of the structure. The, so, the, so I mean, like the. I think the answer I mean, is there are, no. Well, there are two spots that we review artifacts now, right? When you go into active and the project proposal. But uh, my, I guess my comment was uh, the TSC is, I guess, primarily a governance oversight kind of body. And I would have some assumption that uh, the, the underlying governance of projects might be a reviewable item um, with that kind of scope. So that's why I was asking that question. Dan? Uh, I was just saying that that no, I, I thought that the short answer to his earlier question was that no, we don't specifically review that as an independent artifact. I think guidance. And shall I, shall I say uh, why not? I, I think it's open, I guess, to, to review at any point that we would be at a milestone the milestones that you were bringing up. Okay, so if I understand yeah. that right, you're, you're, you're feeling like it should be reviewed 
it's not independent, but it's part of milestones. So I think what Troy is touching on, and tell me, Troy, if I get that wrong, but maybe, you know, like when we have the change to active status, is that something that should be documented and that should be checked, you know, as part of the course of graduating to active status? Oh, I, I guess my first question was the generic, like I thought it should be. <laughs> and then the second part would be at what point, but sure. So maybe you shouldn't have asked the question and said, you should have said, I think we, this needs to be reviewed. By you. <laughs> you're, you're correct. Uh, my, my intention was, to, I, I think it should be reviewed. Yes. And okay. Next time I'll rephrase it differently. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, making it an open question leaves everybody wondering, uh, what's the right answer here? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, like I said, I just, I just feel like, Basically, the TSC does governance oversight stuff, like I said. So this just seemed like a direct governance thing. No, I think that's reasonable. Any other questions or comments? Otherwise, I'd like to I, move on to the next one. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, I think, uh, you know, the repo structure can provide guidance around making sure that it's included in one of the documents that goes into the, the repo. And then um, I agree. Uh, we could review it at, you know, the point at which a project decides that it wants to go active or whatever that state is that we decide that um, we need to make sure that people, to me, I, I feel like going active is is part of making sure that your community is uh, set up to, to succeed, if you will, right, and can do releases and, and part of doing releases is documenting really how decisions are made. Um, so to me, active stat, status kind of state makes sense as a review milestone okay so i think again i mean the, uh, so you agree that they should be addressed as part of the repo structure stuff so let's wait for the repo structure task force to complete its mission and then i would expect once there is a repo structure that we all endorse that we make that as an exit criteria of uh, to to move off incubation so Let's go back to the list, right, if you will, and look at the next one. So there are two related proposals. The first one is housekeeping, is that when there is a bunch of uh, projects that, are of, that were officially labeled as top level project because they were brought through the HIP process. And even though we've never actually handled them that way in practice, we don't have quarterly reports from any of those. And so this is just housekeeping saying, okay, once we agree about the former, we can just say, okay, all these projects that were created, you know, as top level project, but really were not handled as such, will be officially, you know, uh, rolled into the, related project. In practice, I believe all of the ones that are um, impacted by this are fabric related projects. So they would all become part of fabric. And as far as any of us knows, there's no actual uh, artifact that needs adjustment on the wiki or the web pages or anything. That's like right. That. Yeah. It's just because people have asked the question now and then say, hey, what about this? And so we would just have a record of that. Yeah, well, they might have been brought up as project, but really they're all part of fabric and that's it. So hopefully that's not controversial. And then the last bit is about the um, how we handle proposals. And in practice, I mean, this is just endorsing or making official what we've been doing. I have to give it to Dan. I mean, he kind of led the way there in, you know, when people uh, propose to the TSC new project that seem to be very related to a specific project that exists. And we've seen a few of those, for instance, related to fabric. And what this basically says is, as a first step, we'll encourage the, the, the proposers to bring their proposal to the related project, see if they can just join that community, that project, become part of that project. And 
if that works out, then everything is good. If it doesn't, then they can come back to us and then we'll look at it again, see if deserves to be created as a separate project or what. So this is how we have actually been handling the last several project proposals we received. So um, it seems to have worked quite well. So this is just to make it official. Any questions or comments about any of this stuff? Okay, hearing none. I would like to propose we approve those three proposals in bulk, like we did for the previous set. Seconded. Thank you. So everybody in favor says hi. 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 A lot of silent people, but okay. <laughs> it's not a very loud crowd today. Okay, anybody wants to oppose, uh, object? Anybody wants to abstain? Okay, hearing none, this is hereby approved. Thank you very much. I'm happy to say that this not only closes those issues, it actually completes the mission of the Project Lifecycle life Task Force. We have no more uh, open issues related to this at this point in time. So, thank you. All right, so we have a few minutes left. I wanted to try to get back and I put that last on the agenda because it's a bit more open-ended. The last point is, no, the last point is the TSC election voters selection. We started talking about it last week. We're a bit all over the map. And I would like somebody to take a crack at coming up with a proposal on this. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, I haven't tried myself. Maybe I can do that if nobody else does. But I thought maybe so, somebody would be willing to do this. So I guess the question is, if we start from the simplest and then see what's wrong with it, maybe that's an idea. Like, the simplest would be collect the commits from the Git repos. Yeah, and my understanding in the past is that there were a bunch of things that were not collected when we did that. We wanted to have a way of including those things. Um, and the first effort here in the comments is to try to move as much as we can to Git so that you know papers we write and other things start to show up as Git commits. And then the second question is, how do we catch things that might not, that might still fall through the tracks? And how do we have a coherent process for that? So, so I'm going to go back to Rye because he wasn't there last uh, week. And so Rye. Oh, no. You're the one who had the trouble of handling this whole thing and the, like, the moving target over the years. So mm -hmm. what are the biggest problems with the way things are or the things we did last, last I mean, this year? It was the inconsistent way that we gathered uh, who was eligible to vote and the inconsistent understanding of who was eligible to vote. Um, you know, at, at, the, at one end, uh, the, you know, the proposal, you know, if it's in Git, you get to vote. If it's not, you don't. Um, that's a very attractive place to, to start. Um, the thing is, a lot of people, particularly on GitHub, don't use um, valid emails. So the, that's another problem. And uh, other difficulties were, uh, you know, the email addresses change over time. People change where they work. And even if they were valid at one time, they are no longer valid. And uh, then beyond that, it was getting in touch with people and getting getting to the vote, which led to probably a very low voter turnout. So I know last week Tracy pointed us to this script that she is developed to try to gather the list of everybody and all that. But it seems to me that I still heard have... back afterwards. 
that um, none of the Chinese actually even got the boat from the software that we're using, nor did the Brazilians. So there were mm. also problems with that. Even mm. though we had double checked and gotten emails from them, it should have worked. That sounds bad. Right. I don't so, know exactly that, is to do that because that isn't something we can fix easily if we do things driven by email. And Condorcet is part of the charter for the TSC. So if we're going to yes. change the way we vote, we need to change the charter. Yeah. So, I mean, you can see on the page right in front of you, 43 comments. So it's not like people have no opinions on this. The problem is when I went through all the comments, and, you know, up to now at least, it's a bit all over the map. There are those who go say, hey, let's just go, you know, Let's restrict the list to commuters that are committing and make sure they are like valuable co contributions and to no anybody can, you know, we should include everybody, the lab, the TS, uh, no, the SIG, what is it called? Yeah, SIGs and, and whatnot. So uh, my biggest problem right now on this issue is I don't know how to, you know, what to aim for to try to gain convergence. So I don't know if anybody has a magic bullet there, but. Uh, well, I think the, the, the closest I've heard on this call is we stick with commits as the eligibility and then the operational challenges of dealing with emails. Uh, we probably need some more discussion how to resolve those, but that could be even just better communication in the contributing guide. I agree. And maybe if the email isn't valid, then, then I mean, you're not, maybe not part of the vote. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fine to, I mean, I know Salona doesn't like having a, a public email. I can see that in the chat. Um, but I, mean, I kind of think it's, it's mostly OK. I mean, like, if, if you do any kind of like paper writing, then your email is already public anyway. So. so, so what is the alternative that someone registers their I have fake a big address? Diversity problem with that. Um, requiring me to have a public email means I get some really insulting letters just from being female. But uh, I mean, so I am very opposed to sitting there saying that I have to keep up and monitor and do things like that with a public email. I think people deserve the right to have privacy. Can and I, know I I'm not uh, ask a question? Only... Yes. Sure. So, um, I mean, the alternative to that would be um, if you want to vote, you would have had to register your public email address privately with uh, the Hyperledger staff. That's um, cool. And then it, then, then yes, it would be a simple association. And, do that. Yeah. 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 And, and I'm if they totally don't, then they're fine. not in the vote. Yeah. If people want to do that, that's totally fine. Okay, we already so have this in place. I mean, LFID could be used for this, right? If you used a, an email and a password rather than a social login. Yeah, I mean, I think an, LF, an LFID is not a bad way to go here. Yeah, but LFIDs don't always have any email address, so that alone doesn't solve the problem. We're out of time. I'm just saying if, me. yeah. So this confirms what I feared, is that, you know, this is not an easy one. <laughs> so. I am not sure if anybody has some bright idea, please yeah. chime in. Otherwise, I don't know we're going to make progress on this. With this I, being said, I'm glad we have, no, I'm sorry, we are out of time. We have to close this. Let's keep it okay. for next time. Thank you all for joining today. I'm glad we have managed to close quite a few issues, some of which are pretty significant. So thank you. Good work. Talk to you next week. Bye.